Welcome to Markets Now. I'm Michelle Rook along with Don Rose, U.S. Commodities. We ended mixed in livestock with cattle lower hogs higher, and we were steady to better in the grains today. And Don, let's start off talking about wheat, which was the big leader, some double digit gains. Was that weather concerns? Was that concerns about, you know, this uh, nuclear plant being blown up in Ukraine? What was it? Yeah, you know, I think, Michelle, it's just a little bit of everything. You know, when the market's oversold uh, down seven days in a row, pretty hard trying to follow the corn lower, you get anything that changes, you can get some big short covering. And that's exactly what we had. The had the uh, nuclear talk, the issue uh, in Ukraine, Russia. We've got the corridor coming up. What's going to happen with the grain shipments? Then we worried about uh, some of the reports that Russia crop uh, on wheat. Uh, not as big as the trade thought. And then concerns with Canada and the U.S. markets uh, in the wheat also. Quality issues with the uh, wheat, with uh, too much rain in the uh, hard red winter wheat area, too dry in Canada. So a little bit of everything gave us a good technical bounce, Michelle. You bet. Uh, what about the corn market? Uh, we went down, we took out that May low, we got back above it. But where do you see that corn market going here as it continues to try to digest these extra acres? that we got in the acreage report. Yeah, you know, I think going forward, it's really going to be all about what the yield is. We'll see what the government says July 12th. But you really have to ask yourself, what do you think the harvest low is on corn? And I guess, you know, we kind of think here at U.S. Commodities, 460, 470, maybe 460, 480 is low enough. So don't really have a lot of risk premium uh, in this market. If anything turns uh, uh, a little bit threatening, much like we had in the wheat, you can get a big short covering bounce in the uh, corn uh, the corn market's about pressed as oversold as it was overbought at the top. So watch how we react to uh, news. If you get news that you think is negative and you don't press it, that means we've got it dialed in. And I think that's what we're trying to figure out right at this level. Farmer's not going to be a seller at these levels across the corn belt when you're talking 440, 460 uh, on uh, new crop corn. I mean, he's going to wait and see once what the insurance does. So no incentive for the producer to sell here if you haven't, Michelle. So, Don, in your mind, how much of a yield drop would we have to have here, a yield loss would we have to have on corn to offset the two million extra acres that we picked up? Well, you know, I think when you look at it, uh, you know, around 176 uh, yield pretty well does it. Um, you know, and that's, uh, you know, if we're at 175, you probably tighten the balance table 50 to 100 million. So I think the bottom line, Michelle, realistically, you're probably not a lot different on the balance table than we were when we were, uh, you know, at 490 and three quarters at the low before. So, you know, are we at some kind of value down at these levels? You would certainly think so uh, with the soybean uh, market moving forward, but also this uh, corn soybean ratios, Michelle, is going to be very important. Uh, look for South America probably to up the uh, production on uh, soybean on the acres versus the corn if we stay this way. And then, the, of course, our U.S. farmer will be up to bat after that, Michelle. Yeah. So what is the corn soybean ratio right now, Don? I mean, is it enough to incentivize that South American acreage too? Well, I think when you look at the uh, the uh, input cost differential between the two, you get around this 2.7, 2.8 uh, uh, ratio uh, uh, soybeans over corn. I think that's enough. And that's about where we're at. Not that we can't go higher too, but I think you're at a point where South America buys acres. That's not a story today, but I think look for that to pick up as we get closer into the end of August as they'll start their planting there. And uh, that'll be the issue. And if they don't, we will hear. So I think it's one of those that ratio will bring you home as far as direction. Also the uh, November 23, July 24 spread and the same thing in the corn, Dece July 24 will give you an idea of how bullish or bearish this market is. So keep an eye on those spreads very close, Michelle. Yeah, and the other thing that we're watching, you know, the November contract has failed to get above the $14 level, even with 4 million less acres. Is that a concern? Well, I think it definitely is a warning sign. And I think what it's really saying is while the market is very peppy uh, to the upside here from uh, those acres going down, I think it's also very respectful that you've got uh, in short order, we've got a six month window um, where we change these acres very quick from South America. And I think that's a concern. And, you know, the spreads were telling us the same thing. November uh, got about almost 50 cents over the July 24. Um, you know, if it's if it's out of those big numbers, it ended more like uh, 20. 
but you're going to see more beans put in the pipeline short term as we hit the fall and that'll buffer it until South America hits it. So I think that's part of the reason um, you couldn't really push up to that $14 level. Um, if this market's any good, it probably is going to have to and make new highs eventually, Michelle. Yeah, but we're going to have what pipeline supplies in order to do that or not? Yeah, I mean, I think right now you're at pipeline minimum, and then that depends okay. on what happens to the yield. I mean, if you look at it, we're at 52 as far as the government. If you go down to uh, 49 and a half, 50 uh, million or yield, uh, you've wiped out the carryout. Well, we know we can't do that. Probably pipeline minimum is really probably around 100, 125, 30 million bushels. So you're pretty much there, Michelle. So uh, that's why this market on hard setbacks, if it's any good, it should see some uh, continued buying underneath the market. Okay, let's move over to cattle, a down day there, but um, was this just some profit taking or hedge pressure? I mean, gosh, we just hit new contract highs in both. Yeah, you know, the cattle market overall, it's a, a you know, cyclical bull market, it, well documented. Um, you know, we're really not, haven't even really started the expansion phase here yet, which is interesting. So uh, most definitely, I think it's all about, can we uh, move the beef but um, markets holding up on the cash market better than the trade had thought and uh, probably better than it should. Um, the numbers are going to be tight going forward. Let's see what happens. We had a, a short kill week. Uh, Packers going to be uh, buying for that, keeping the numbers or the uh, supplies tight going uh, into the next week. But then should loosen up and we should get a couple, three, three, four weeks of a down market in here. The futures market just has a big discount. That's the issue. Uh, usually this time of year, it's about an even basis level. Yeah. So the hogs have had quite a run off the contract lows here. And, you know, we got above the $100 mark in the July contract even today. Do you see that market continuing to go higher here, pushed by the cash or what's been leading this? Well, you know, for every action, there's an overreaction. It was just a uh, uh, just a, a very negative attitude when we were at the lows and you can see what happens, you know, funds got caught and ran it up to the upside. We demand changed, demand really picked up. Uh, and that was really the supportive factor that gave us a push. The cutouts been going up constantly. The cash has been going up. Um, last year, August hogs went to 123 with supplies that aren't a lot different. So I think we're probably, when you get around this hundred dollar market, we're seeing in August, we're seeing uh, risk management pick up a little bit. Long term, I think you have to be more bullish with the liquidation that we saw out in those deferred months or those uh, deferred months out next June, July, maybe even February has a better uh, fundamental than it is the upfront. But the demand really picked up as the economy hasn't really broke back like the trade thought. And so the demand was there and that really helped us uh, to the upside, Michelle. Absolutely. It was almost like whiplash. All right. Thanks for joining us, Don Rose, U.S. Commodities. And that is Markets Now.